I've always been fascinated with invention. My, uh, my father filed some patents, my brothers filed patents. We were always the kind of family where something was, was like, wow, isn't this clever? How'd they do this? You know, we, I really was a big fan of ingenuity early on, and I really got that from my, my parents. Doing television over the years, I used to showcase just innovative products, not necessarily inventor products. And what happened is inventors saw me on TV, saw me demonstrating products, and said, hey, you know, how can I get myself in a segment? My product would be great for you. So I started all of a sudden having this following of inventors who just kept contacting me. And they all had interesting stories. When I met them in cities, you know, we'd meet for lunch or something. I, I was always kind of dazzled by their passion for whatever it is they were they had come up with. So I really saw a book in that. Yeah. For most inventors, inspiration is a problem. They're living their lives, they're a mommy raising a two-year-old, they're a plumber, they're an electrician, and they come up against a problem and they go, huh, how do you fix that? And they go to a store to try and find the solution for that problem, they can't find it, then they come up with themselves, and that's really what invention, I think almost 95% of them is because they've had the problem and they need to find a solution, find a product that solved it, it wasn't out there, so they came up with it. I'm on the board of the UIA, which is the United Inventors Association, and that's the nonprofit group that oversees all the invention clubs and associations throughout America. And I'm a big fan of having people join their local chapter. You join your local chapter, you'll meet other inventors in your neighborhood. They can direct you to good lawyers, good uh, prototype builders, good uh, all the things you'll need to go across the process. Save money for marketing because you got this great idea, but if no one comes into the tent, no one's going to know about it. So you've got to save a significant chunk of money for marketing the idea. Color is critically important. You know, consumers make a lot of decisions based on something emotional. I mean, there's a, the decision between buying something and not buying something is sometimes as simple as the colors. So I, I would even go into uh, some psychology books where we're attracted to some colors and repelled by other colors, and that all goes into making a successful product. A lot of inventors make the mistake of keeping their idea secret. They're so afraid that someone's going to steal that idea that they sit and they work in their basement and in their garage and they kind of work on it and work on it and they don't tell anyone about it. And I think that's a huge mistake. I don't think the world is really out there looking to steal your product because the road to invention is so bumpy, so long, so hard, so uphill that very few people are going to take, take the idea from you and run with it. I mean, one of the reasons I wrote my book, Gadget Nation, is because it really shows a lot of different examples of what can happen to advance. It's almost like little case studies. More than 100 products, more than 100 inventors, and you get a sense of different roads they all took. Some made millions, others have lost hundreds of thousands of dollars, but you see what they did right or what they did wrong or how they're still on the journey. And by reading through the book, hopefully it's a fun read for folks, but at the same time, I think you take out of it a lot of information. So it's, in some ways, a learning experience. In other ways, it's just a fun read. But it's really about what some inventors have done and what has worked and what hasn't worked. And I think it's a great resource for any wannabe inventor out there. There's something about having some immortality of walking into a store and seeing your product. And there's something, in something very heady, very exciting about that. But it's also very, very, very American. I mean, America, we talk about being about freedom and whatnot, and that's truly what we're about. But we're really about entrepreneurship in this country. It's about coming up with an idea, whether it be the bobby pin or whiteout or whatnot, and then taking that idea, getting it to market, and making zillions of dollars and changing your life, your children, your grandchildren. The whole trajectory of your family can change because of one idea. And it's such an American concept. You know, in other parts of the world, it's about being related to royalty or what family you come from. But in this country, you can come from any family. And if you've got a great idea and it becomes the next big thing, you've changed your life and your family's life. Extreme collaboration is really exactly what I've been talking about because your show is all about getting the public, the viewers to help inventors and entrepreneurs move forward. And that's why I'm a big fan of joining invention associations and whatnot, because if you work in a garage and you don't tell anybody about your idea and you're too scared to let it out that someone's gonna steal it, well then you're not gonna be able to go to the next step. So just as your show helps bring the world in to help out that person, I'm a big advocate of that. So it's, a, it's really a perfect match to what I think is the way to a successful invention scenario.